Welcome back, everyone, with the Cube coverage here live in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. This is day three. We've got another whole day coming, but again, a lot of slew of announcements. Swami's on stage, finishing his keynote. Again, this is about the AI agents, more of a deep dive. And as you see, the infrastructure focus, focus on agents, the focus on data around Gen AI is going to be the big, big focus. Shivas is here, general manager of Telco business at AWS. Of course, we follow gr greatly because of MWC, but also networking is the fundamental component of everything in Telco is, you can talk about networking. That's the key one. Shivas, great to see you again. Thanks for coming back. Yeah, it's fantastic to see you. Thank you for having me. So everything that's was hot and cool is still cool again. So networking, <laughs> telco, again, these industries you're starting to see one of the big trends, and we've talked about this last time, is that just the revitalization of what cloud, cloud scale brings to these industries. Telco is one of them, but every industry, because you now have the ability to kind of make what the pre-existing stuff better. Uh, I'd like to get your perspective on that because as we go into Mobile World Congress next year, we've been already working on, okay, what's going to be the editorial angles, and you know, obviously one of them is business model transformation, which we talked about last time, which is not just technical, digital transformation. Mm -hmm. The business model piece is now emerging. Yep. All these new tools, all these new capabilities are coming in at the infrastructure level, yep. uh, significant advancements and breakthroughs. Yeah, and as you know, like you've worked with AWS a bit, so you know we think in terms of flywheels, and if you think about the normal telco flywheel at this point, it's like usage, and usage drives, revenue and usage drives the network build out and then the network build out and the capabilities there allow you to go out and build better products. So if you think in that flywheel terms and you know, now you say, okay, how do I apply generative AI? How do I apply cloud to this flywheel? I think that's where what you're talking about is really coming to bear, right? In that entire business process, generative AI is helping you think through at the network operations level, at the business and the product creation level, at the actual customer experience level, all three are getting accelerated, and no better place to do that than in AWS and the cloud. Yeah, I want to get into the, um, some of the um, scale, technical things, as well as the business model transfer, but I first want you to set the table and share with the folks how you're looking at the business right now as general yeah. manager of the telco business. First, describe what that looks like. Yeah. What's your focus? Yeah. So it's been an interesting year. Uh, we've spent a lot of time really focusing on what our customers are asking us for, and it's three areas and then a growth area, right? So it's like three areas on Generative AI, obviously, like everybody's interested in figuring out how to apply this to as much of their business as possible. The second area is network transmission. We had some interesting announcements here today, this week. Uh, we announced that Comcast, for example, has moved their 5G core over to run on AWS. Uh, and that comes on the backs of an announcement with Telefonica where they've moved up a million subs over to a region in, in uh, Frankfurt. And then they've also talked publicly about how they're going to add another 4 million subs in the next uh, 18 months. So that's, you can tell that 5G network core is now something yeah. that's a part of what we do. Uh, if you think about then the big migration modernization effort, we're hearing a lot of questions and conversations about how do you continue that journey, take all of that footprint of things that are running on some of the partner solutions and move them over to the cloud because you need that agility. You have mm. all the insights coming from the Gen AI work, but for you to act on it, you actually need systems that are addressable via APIs and that can scale up and down. So those are the three areas in the in the telco business itself. And then we're seeing revenue growth opportunities and adjacency. So things we're doing with, for example, Telus, where we've built a smart home ecosystem with them. They're thinking about how do you scale that out globally for other operators. We've worked with Sunrise in um, Switzerland to kind of build a small and medium business marketplace that allows them to address that marketplace with like cloud solutions in much much more targeted fashion. So those four areas, I think, are where we're spending a lot of our time. Well, and also you you know you highlight some of those names. Also, global is obviously a big part of yeah. it. The regions we had Tanuja Randari on from EMEA talking about the sovereign cloud. So these regional approaches also is a nice piece That's right. for the folks to kind of plug into Amazon. I love the the message um, that you guys have around the flywheel around giving people control of their destiny, mm -hmm. right, and at scale. And I think one of the topics that's coming up is, uh, and and you see this in the telco, some of the names you mentioned, they're not small companies. Nope. They're running massive amounts of transactions. We had J.P. Morgan Chase, CIO, uh, on the Cube yesterday, Lori Beard. She's moving 10 trillion a day. Yeah. I mean, that's critical infrastructure, right? So for her, even the bank, yeah. right? So talk about the, um, the scale piece of this, because your customers are operating at such scale, okay, and they also want to control their own destiny, control the money, so to speak, because they want to make that business model transformation. What are some of the um, um, comments that you have on that? Because this kind of brings the confluence of the business model with the yep. scale and technical 
challenges of keeping the thing, everything going fast, secure. And you know, Dave Brown was even mentioning some of the advancements at the silicon level yep. coming in and helping yeah. out. And I think what you mentioned there about uh, the regions and customization for the regions is super important. So we'll touch that, touch on that in a second. If you think about what we're doing with telcos, telcos are nationally critical infrastructure in every country. They're typically highly regulated, so they have bounds on how they can use their data. And we're working with them and working backwards from those requirements. So you've seen what we've done in our European sovereign cloud and the announcement of what we build there that is very focused on what that set of users needs. And now that you can see tier one carriers really say, okay, I can build a solution on top of AWS technologies that allows me to meet these regulatory needs, that allows me to actually build and scale, but it's not just I meet regulatory needs, then I'm actually able to build a platform and a set of solutions that works better than what I had today, right? And so back to Telefonica, like it is one of the top three carrier carriers in Germany, the expectation that they have been able to take the set of workloads that's core to their business, run it, and they've talked publicly about how they can scale up and down as needed, and actually put that in the regions, so which means we've solved for both the technical challenges, sec the security challenges, and the regulatory challenges of that core system running in, in AWS. And we think our journey over the last 10 years of learning with telcos has actually put us in a position to help them scale. So we did DISH, which is the first nationwide network so in the nice. US, right? We learned a, a ton from, from our customers that way. And with Telefonica and now with Comcast, again, these transitions are getting much faster. So we think the, the scale is, of course, at every point when you yeah. hit a certain threshold of scale, you have to work through some of these challenges, but we have a path. And they got the data too, I mean, yeah. got tons of data. Talk about the, um, the problems as you guys work backwards from the customer. What are they telling you are some of their core challenges that you guys are helping them overcome? Yeah. A lot of interest and focus is really on the Gen AI side of the house right now. So their primary focus is, well, last year was the year of POCs. Like I've seen customers who have hundreds of POCs that are running. And then how do I take these into production? Then you start to see all the challenges. So there are a couple of things that we're working with them on. One is how do we provide the choice? Like AWS, the way we think about it, like customers are going to need to make different choices in terms of models, in terms of platforms they're going to use, in terms of ISV partner solutions that they'll use. How do we provide you with a platform that you can build that gives you the choice of the models, that gives you the ability to take all the work that you've done to protect your data, to provide um, pro safe answers back when you send something into these into these models? And then how do you bind that to like all of your corporate guidelines around how you use this data? And then not have to redo it again, right? Mm -hmm. You make another choice of a different model, you don't have to go recreate all of this. So, our work with Bedrock and providing the models there is, is important. I'll tell you though, in summer, in the summer this year, we did a survey with TM Forum uh, with about 200 of the decision makers at these telcos to say, okay, what are you seeing with Gen AI and how are you using it? And it was interesting to see some numbers come out of it. There were only 14% of them that had done more than 10 use cases. And there were about 50% that thought they had a platform that they could start to build and scale and only about 25% that actually had a point of view that said we have the talent and the capability to go drive this. So there's a lot of demand in that space. Yeah. And so what we did with some of our leading customers like a British Telecom here is, we said, well, let's help figure out what that architecture looks like. So we've built the Gen AI gateway model with them that they allows them to send requests, not just into Bedrock, but also like to multiple providers. It puts all the same guardrails around it and then it provides landing zones for multiple use cases to come on board and just Activate, right? Because that is the hard part, activating. So they're actually, so the numbers actually are right, more than I thought, but that's still compelling. There's more headroom there. There's ton more headroom. I mean, they're right now just trying to figure out their workflows, mm -hmm. what data, I and mean, obviously the data becomes a big part. We're hearing here, the, this theme at reInvent is clear. The enterprise and, or anyone who has data is not just going to let it fly around, you know, uncontrollable and models that aren't theirs. Yeah. Or if they do use models, they're highly curated, highly specific, uh, with some resilience framework. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what we're hearing. I mean, this is kind of where yeah. we're at. And that's the learning over the last year, right? If you look at, I talked about the telco flywheel, you look at usage in the network and the customer experience, all of that throws off data. And that data is what we've been using for the last two decades to really optimize what we do in each of these segments. But what generative AI is doing, it's like it's accelerating that, right? It's accelerating the flywheel because you can now take a business use case and say, okay, what data do I have around it? 
What insight can I drive from it? And then back to this conversation about if your apps are modernized, if your apps have been migrated, then you can act on them, and that closed loop is what is actually driving the acceleration. So obviously Gen AI is a focus, and you're seeing yeah. that people are starting to figure out these landing zones, these kinds of frameworks to kind of get the innovation uh, wave going. What about at the infrastructure level? Are you seeing any advancements there that uh, is interesting to the telecom uh, sector around some of the things you're doing? I mean, Dave, and I, Dave Brown and I talked about Tranium 2, we talked about Tranium 3, they yeah. kind of pre-announced it here, they didn't really give specifics, but you know, if you look at kind of how Amazon's going with their, you know, their capabilities. Mm -hmm. It's getting smaller, faster, less expensive to yeah. run things. So you, you natural progression would be, you know, hosting like outpost like capabilities, not say outpost, but like yeah, you know, pushing it to the edge. That might be appealing to a telco because for form factor, yep, I could co-locate Amazon in there. Is there any advancements that you can share around the infrastructure innovation? So I think the way I would think about it is like what use cases are the telcos trying to solve mm -hmm. for, right? Up to now, a lot of it has been high value use cases where if you're able to take a transaction and that transaction cost you, let's say $50 for a truck roll, mm -hmm. can I spend a couple of dollars to get the insights to avoid that truck roll? That's great. As the cost of this infrastructure starts to go down, you can start to address more of these use cases and then there will be edge inference use cases that I think long term will develop in the marketplace. But if you look at where most of that engineering work is going, think about the work we've done with South Korea Telecom right now, right? Where they've had to go and build a Korean model, um, large language model that is fine-tuned with their data. And they've announced that they've built it, they've launched it, and that is a fair amount of work that's running on AWS infrastructure that is, that is scaled now, right? And we'll see more of those use cases, I think, as the cost of this inference comes down, as the cost of training comes down, yeah. especially with our next generation of, uh, of information and training chipsets going out. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that um, these language models are, all, most of them are in English. Yeah. And so foreign local characters, local language yep. is a big opportunity. It is a big opportunity. And the context in, in a specific country, the context in a specific society is important to make, to get the right answers out. And then what they saw was when they did the fine tuning, they saw like dramatic improvements up to like 70, 75% improvement in the accuracy of the data that came back. And then they talked about like how it's standardized responses. You might get questions in many different shapes, but you want similar answers back because that represents your brand. Uh, and then the last thing they talked about is like when they bring in new people into the ecosystem and into the contact centers, as an example, it accelerates the training process much faster. It reduces the amount of like stress in trying to figure out data from multiple different systems. And so that's all of it like starting to show up in the results for, for telcos as they take advantage of Gen AI. Any other um, things going on around AWS and your area, telco, that you see that's notable? You mentioned Connect. Yep. I mean, Connect is an AWS service that, that was, did extremely well during the pandemic. Now it's a, a, the, the core flagship in the new AWS Solutions Group yep. uh, under Colleen Aubrey. And so, like, I can imagine that Amazon's got some goodness it could bring out to the field, so to speak, you, or, or areas. Um, Anything there to report uh, on your end? Are you seeing anything coming out of Amazon that you're going to be able to put through uh, Telco from a business perspective? I mean, Connect, are they p using Connect? They have their own. How do you see that Connect uh, working? The telcos are some of the largest <laughs> call center <laughs> yeah. uh, providers in the world. They host it for themselves. They host it for other parties. We are seeing with customers like VMO2 in the UK where they've been able to do this migration of, of Connect. We've talked about Dish doing a mass migration of 15,000 agents within like a few weeks. To right? connect. To connect. Oh, so they're, they're adopting They are it. actually using it and adopting yeah. it. And we actually had a session at reInvent this year where the Viamoto team talked about how it is yeah. that they were able to move and migrate these workloads over. And now what, what that opens up is they're able to go yeah. take advantage of all the Gen AI capabilities to improve that that conversation in the life cycle consistently. I'm a ton of, tongue in cheek. I've, I've said this, they move at the speed of glaciers, but um, I say that in a, in a, in a complimentary way, but, but I will also compliment the telco uh, businesses because they have such a large business. So, I mean, they have experimentation. They're not moving as fast as the nerds and the uh, entrepreneurs want to move because, of course, they want to adopt new gear, right, and new stuff. So, but I think they're pragmatic in the sense of if there's a business model customer value, yes, because there's a lot of stuff to to do if you do some big change in telco. And I think, you know, that's my caveat. And I, I always joke because I love new technology. And like, telco should just go to the cloud. This is like 10 years ago. It's like, okay, a little slow. Um, but now they see the, the value. And, and because the impact is there, the real dollars and cents, practical use cases. And actually, Andy Jassy used that word on stage yesterday, practical AI. Right. 
And I think that is a, a key story here. I mean, having actual practical implementations that either reduce costs or drive revenue. Absolutely. And in the end, like if you think about the consumer experience that they get, yeah. that all the consumers in the enterprises get from, from a telco, the question is, what have we not been able to do in the last, let's say, 10 years, right? Like we've invested a lot of money in building out 5G networks. You've had the promise of 5G SA providing you with like slices on the network, but that has required us to take all these systems and modernize them. And telcos have been doing that in yeah. the background. So I see that work has happened. The next step of this is like, how do you then drive revenue out of it through productization? Yeah. How do you drive revenue out of it through the experimentation that requires productization? And with engineering teams now getting Gen AI assisted ability to go build products, I think that'll ramp yeah. that up. The ability to go look at all the data that they have and then be able to use it in a seamless fashion, that'll help ramp it up. And finally, on the core network itself, as you can see, the network workloads yeah. are starting to become more cloud native and that'll change at the beginning. I'm very bullish on telecom. I've always loved network, the networking business. And I think networking is now moving everywhere up the stack. Even the concept of networking, LLM routing, you're seeing that as a big part of what, what Swami was introducing today around all these new ways, just let models talk to each other. That's a routing problem. I mean, this is networking, right? So it networking is. kind of comes up there. Um, Shivas, I got to ask you to wrap up here because um, I know you're busy, um, but Mobile World Conference is coming up yeah. and we're doing our preparation. I know you got yours. What's your vision uh, as we go into 2025, MWC will be you know, later in, in the first half of the year. Um, always a, a bellwether show uh, yeah. in Barcelona. What's your vision for the industry? How do you see the agenda? What what are what's the conversations that we'll be um, we'll be having uh, going into MWC this year? I think the conversations that we're all going to see is about how do you take the connectivity plus place, right? So if you look at connectivity as the baseline of everything we do that is going to become programmatically accessible through APIs. That thread is really starting to gain momentum now. There was a joint venture that was announced with a bunch of operators, and we can see in partnering with them, we expect these APIs to start to become available globally. Once that's done, then I think you start to get industry use cases that can address it. And to take advantage of that internally, all of these telcos have to go through and finish the migration process. They have to get really good at Gen AI and using Gen AI to drive their business. So I think that's what we're going to be talking about. We're talking about how Gen AI is going to impact the business. We're going to talk about network transformation. And then we're going to talk about like revenue generating use cases. And I'd <laughs> love to spend more time building new use cases yeah. for end, end yeah. customers. And we love those customer success stories too, because people want to see what their peers are working on. As general manager, are you, you happy with the business? What's some of your business goals going forward? What are, you, what are you trying to knock down over the next few months? We're always working backwards from the customer. So our customers are telling us they want to move faster. Yeah. They want to build more revenue out of all of the capabilities they have. That's where we're laser focused. Right. I'm Cheers. pretty excited about it. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Getting the telco angle here on theCUBE and AWS reInvent. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Stay with us for another wall to wall coverage here, day here in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent 24, our 12th year with theCUBE. Thanks for watching.